We're continuing chapter 6, Talismanic Magic, and by those simple figures, and by joining them together, they describe all other compound numbers as 11, 12, and 100, and 10. And 111, by adding to the number 10, those which are units, and in the like manner to the rest, after their manner. Yet, we describe the fifteenth number, not by ten and five, but six, these by nine and... What? And that, out of honor to the divine name, Yah, which signifies fifteen, lest that sacred name should be abused and profane things. Likewise, the Egyptians, Athiopians, which is from a Greek term for uh, burnt-faced. Chaldeans and Arabians have their marks of numbers, which serve for the making of magical characters, but the Chaldeans mark their numbers with the letters of their alphabet, after the manner of the Hindu adepts. In this volume of constellatory art and talismanic and art magic, where you found some very rare characters, which he's figured in the following manner, and I've shown very briefly. Like, we have a stick, and it goes to the right, so like an upside-down L, and then that mark is moved a little bit down on that right side, and so that's the two. If it's diagonal down from the top, more like a rune, it's a three, if it's kind of like a Y, it's like a 4. If like the 2, but like just like a dot off to the, off to the side, slightly down from the top point, um, you know, on the, on the right there, it's a 5. If it goes up as high as the full line, it's a 6. If it connects as well, it's a 7. If it connects forming like a backwards Y, it's an 8. If it's like the Wunjo rune, like, so if it's a square, it's a 9. If it's a 10, the line goes from that top point to the left. And if it's a 20, just down, much like the 2, it's a 20. And a 30, it's like diagonally down to the left. Um, it's that kind of like a Y, but like a straight line. You know, again, going to the left if it's a 40. If it's a 50, uh, slightly down from the top, but kind of like a line sort of dot. And it goes full on that side. I mean, it doesn't go down as far, but it goes up to about the height of the full line if it's a 60. If it's a 70, it connects at the top. If it's an 80, it connects at the bottom of the little line. And if it's a 90, it forms a full square. And those marks being downward to the right hand make hundreds, to the left thousands. And, you know, you follow the same manner, and I'm going to enumerate that further here. We have, you know... Basically, like an L is a hundred, you move that bottom bar a little up, and it's a two hundred. You have a diagonal from the bottom point, and it's a three hundred, and a four hundred. You know, diagonal down from the um, middle of the line. There, it's a you know, it's a four hundred, and then a five hundred is like okay. There's like a sort of like a line, but it's it's makes you think more like a dot. Um, it's not as far down or as far up, but, you know, it's, it's to the right, and it's a 500, and the 600, the line goes fully down. It connects at the bottom if it's a 700, it connects at the top of the little line, you know, um, if it's 800, if it's a 900, it's, it's, it's a square, it thinks you... But the last two, you know, LHB is more what you think. 
and GHD would be the 700, uh, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. Um, and so, you know, 1,000, it would go to the left, like a backwards L. You move the line up a little bit, it's 2,000, 3,000 3, diagonally going up on the left side, diagonally going down, if it's a 4,000, 5,000, that a little ways up, and fully sort of forming a line, so at least the bottom two parts of the line are the same, would be 6,000. If it connects at the bottom, it's 7,000. If it connects at the top, it's 8,000. If, if it, you know, forms that square, it's... It's the 9,000. Um, and so you can, can composite them. And 1801 is almost like a swastika, so a full swastika would be... 1861, okay. 8,888, I've done that as a number video, would be kind of like a man shouting for joy. Um, but it actually looks like two forks, really, because, but, y you can think of that that way. A swastika would be... 8,118. Well, let's, let's move on here. Magical tables of planets. There are certain magic tables of numbers distributed to the seven planets, which they call the sacred tables of the planets, because being rightly formed, they are endued with many great virtues of the heavens insomuch that they represent the divine order of the celestial numbers impressed upon them by the ideas of the divine mind, by means of the soul of the world, and by the sweet harmony of the, those celestial rays, signifying according to proportion supercelestial intelligences, which can no way be expressed than by the marks of numbers, letters, and characters. For the material numbers and figures can do nothing in the mysteries of hidden things, but representatively by formal numbers and figures, as they are governed by informed and informed by intelligences and divine enumerations, which unite the extremes of the matter and spirit to the will of the elevated soul, receiving through great affection by the celestial power of the operator a virtue and power from God applied through the soul of the universe, and the observation of celestial constellations to a matter fit for a form, the mediums being disposed by the skill and industry of the magician. But now I will hasten to explain each particular table. The first table is assigned to the planet Saturn, and consists of a square of three containing the particular numbers of nine, and in every line, three every way, and through each diameter, making fifteen, the whole sum of numbers, forty-five. Over this are set such divine names as fill up the numbers with an intelligence to what is good, and a spirit to bad, and out of the same numbers are drawn the seal and character of Saturn, and of the spirits thereof, such as is beneath ascribed to the table. Now, I've flashed that in a way that I get, uh, uh, you know, on the, on, the, on the screen here, but you can look up these tables. They're not, you know, limited to, you know, this book or anything. Um, but this book's old enough, so, yeah. Now, this table, uh, for the figures and tables, the seals and the seven planets, see the place, okay. The first table is assigned to the planet Saturn, and consists of a square of three, containing the particular numbers of nine, and in every line, every th three every way, and through each diameter, making fifteen. 
the whole sum of numbers, 45. Over this are set such divine names as fill up the numbers with an intelligence to what is good and a spirit to bad. And out of the same numbers are drawn the seal and character of Saturn. And of the spirits thereof, such as is beneath ascribed to the table. Now this table being with a fortunate Saturn engraved on a plate of lead helps childbirth and to make any man safe or powerful and to cause success of petitions with princes and powers. But if it be done to cause but if it be done Saturn being unfortunate, it hinders buildings, planting, and the like, and casts a man from honors and dignities, causes discord, quarreling, and disperses an army. Well, you can certainly psychosomatically do stuff to yourself um, by such beliefs. But perhaps sometimes there's stuff that's related. And so if it doesn't get perfect, it doesn't work. It's, it's, so that, that's, that's the trick, or it works against you. Or, you know, um, cast man for honors and causing discord, quarreling, and disperses an army. Okay. The second is the table of Jupiter, which consists of a square drawn into itself. It contains 16 particular numbers, and in every line in diameter 4, making 34. The sum of all is 136. There are over it divine names with an intelligence to that which is good, and a spirit to bad. And out of it is drawn the character of Jupiter and the spirits thereof. If this is engraven on a plate of silver... With Jupiter being powerful and ruling in the heavens, it conduces to gain riches and favor, love, peace, and concord, and to appease enemies, and to confirm honors, dignities, and counsels, and dissolves enchantments if engraven on a coral. Now, you know, the Saturn glyph is more like that. And we have the table in Hebrew, Beit, Theth, Cheth, Wow, Hey. Well, that's that's not noon. Is that's is that? Okay, I, I think it's Zane, Hey, Wow, and then. Yud, Aleph, Cheth. Oh, that that that's that that can't be right because that's that's not the that's not the numbers one through nine. Um, but the seal of Saturn, you know, it's it's not the seal. It's, it's not the Azazel sigil. Um, you know, the line goes from uh, diagonally across from the bottom with circles in it. And um, in this version, you only have circles in the place of where you'd have the four on the telephone number and the eight on the telephone number. Um, and so, you, you know, you have two lines like, you know, intersecting these and of his intelligence, which is kind of like an S looking thing and of his spirit. Um, and the table of Jupiter being four by four, and, uh, there's some issues with that. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be, as, as much as I've shown, um, these things, it's going to be better to look them straight up. Uh, Jupiter's more like the letter Theth in the way it looks. But, you know, you have like a cross with circles on the ends of the X intersecting a circle. Table of Mars is 5x5. Five five. And they're getting harder to describe. The Sun, 6x6. Six six. If you add up their numbers, it's going to be 666. Um, the character of the Seal of the Sun is kind of interesting. And i um, not sure quite how to describe that one. Uh, Venus is... 7x7, seven seven, which is probably makes the most sense of the numbers that we've picked here. 
Although, eight might also come up. Um, and Venus has more, you know, it, it has four symbols here. The sea love, intelligence, spirits, intelligence, um... Her spirit, her intelligence, her intelligence. Okay, so, yeah, it, it's, it's having more variety here. Um, and, you know, because I'm not sharing them, uh, you know, Mercury is, you know, 8 by 8 and looks more like a box folded in itself and stuff. And the moon, the moon thing reminds you more of the moon than any, uh, you know, the planet than any of the other ones. That's nine by nine, and the moon also has four. Mercury only has two of these other symbols, um, you know, because you have the character kind of based on the square, and you have the other. Um, so the third table belongs to Mars, which is made of a square of five containing 26 numbers, and of these in every side and diameter... 5, which makes 65, and the sum of all is 325, and there are over it divine names with an intelligence to good and a spirit to evil, and out of it is drawn the characters of Mars and his spirits. These, with Mars fortunate being engraven on an iron plate, our sword makes a man potent in war and judgment and petitions, and terrible to his enemies and victorious over them, and if engraven upon the stone Coriola, it stops blood, and the menstruous, but if it be engraven with Mars being unfortunate, on a plate of red brass, it prevents and hinders buildings. It casts down the powerful from dignities, honors, and riches, causes discord and hatred amongst men and beasts, drives away bees, pigeons, and fish, and hinders mills from working, i.e. binds them. It likewise renders hunters and fighters unfortunate, causes barrenness in men and women, and strikes a terror into our enemies, and it compels him to submit. Now, the ritual, the god or entities doing these things, is one of the things. But one of the definitions that people have for the the seher is it's not always known that oh oh they're working with the evil spirits. It's that people worship the salt. Uh, uh, you know they say oh spirit of salt or, or whatever. Um, or they just pray straight for the card or the salt or whatever and that's supposed to answer the questions or do the task. So um, it allows whatever wants to work with the operation to come in if one's worshiping other than God and it just is left open like maybe it's yourself or the spell itself but um so there's a difference that's supposed to exist between talismans and whatever but um this one effect here stopping a woman's natural cycle that doesn't sound like it's a healthy or good idea right the fourth table is of the sun and is made of a square of six, and contains 36 particular numbers, where of six in every side and diameter produce 111. The sum of all is 666. There are over it divine names with an intelligence to what is good and a spirit to what is evil, and out of it is drawn the character of the sun and of his spirits, this being engraven on a plate of pure gold, soul being fortunate, renders him that wears it renowned, amiable, acceptable, potent in all his works, and equals him to a king, elevating his fortunes and enabling him to do whatever he will. But with an unfortunate son makes one a tyrant, proud, ambitious, insatiable, and finally to come to an ill ending. The fifth table is of Venus, consisting of a square of seven, drawn into itself, bees of 49 numbers, 
were of seven on each side and diameter make 175, and the sum of all is 1,225. There are, likewise, over it, divine names, with an intelligence to good, and a spirit to evil, and there is drawn out of it the character Venus, and her spirits, this being engraven on a plate of silver, Venus being fortunate, promotes concord and strife, procures the love of women, helps conception, is good against barrenness, gives ability for generation, dissolves enchantments, causes peace between man and woman, and makes all kinds of animals fruitful and likewise cattle, and being put into a dove or pigeon house, causes an increase. It likewise drives away melancholy, distempers, and causes joyfulness. But this being carried about travelers makes them fortunate. But if it be found upon brass, Venus being unfortunate, it acts contrary to all that has been said. Well, it's your associations or what you've opened things up to that's really doing the and acting upon it, but yeah. The sixth table is a mercury, resulting from a square of eight drawn into itself, containing sixty-four numbers, whereof eight on every side, and by both diameters make two hundred and sixty, and the sum of all is two thousand and eighty, and over it are set divine names with a character, uh, with an intelligence to good, with a spirit to bad, and from it is drawn a character of Mercury, and the spirits thereof, and it, with Mercury being fortunate, you engrave it upon silver, tin, or yellow brass, or write it upon virgin parchment, it renders the bearer thereof grateful, acceptable, and fortunate to do what he pleases. It brings gain and prevents poverty. Helps the memory, understanding, and divination. And to the understanding of occult things by dreams. But with an unfortunate mercury, does everything contrary to this. The seventh and last table is of the moon. It consists of a square of nine. Having 81 numbers. In every side, and diameter 9, producing 369, and the sum of all is 3,321. There are over it divine names with an intelligence to what is good, and a spirit to evil, and from it are drawn the characters of the moon and the spirits thereof. This is the moon being fortunate, engraven on silver, makes the bearer amiable, pleasant, cheerful, and honored, removing all malice and ill will. It causes security in the journey, increase of riches, and health of body, drives away enemies and other evil things. From what place, sober, thou shalt wish them to be expelled. But if the moon be unfortunate, and it be engraven on a plate of lead, wherever it shall be buried, makes that place unfortunate. And the inhabitants thereabouts as also ships, rivers, fountains, and mills, and makes every man unfortunate, against whom it shall be directly done, making fly his place of abode, and even his country, where it shall be buried, and it hinders physicians and orators, and all men, whatsoever in their office, against whom it shall be made. Now, how the seals and characters of the planets are drawn from these tables? The wise searcher, and he shall understand the verifying of these tables shall easily find out. Here follow the divine names corresponding with the numbers of the planets, with the names of the intelligences, and Damans are spirits subject to those names. It is to be understood that the intelligences are the presiding good angels that are set over the planet but that the spirits or diamonds with their names, seals, or characters are never inscribed upon any talisman except to execute 
any evil effect, and they are subject to the intelligences or good spirits. And again, when the spirits and their characters are used, it will be more conducive to the effect to add some divine name appropriate to that effect which we desire. And so you might want to look up the Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon tables for a, a clearer view at least. So names answering to the numbers of Saturn. Numbers 3, Ab, 9, Hud, 15, Yah, 15, Hud, 45 extended, Um, Yura Au Auha that, That's what it looks like So I, I don't know um, 45 Agiel Which see that looks more like a You know I see how it can be a G But it looks more like an N um, so Agyal, the intelligence of Saturn, Zazel, the spirit of Saturn, Zazel, you know, um, names answering to the numbers of Jupiter, four, Abba, well, that's not a, Ab and Abba and all that's not, not a divine name, but, you know, um, well, God is the center, see, there's a lot of ambiguity in some languages, which help fostered some problems when they occurred, but uh, Hua, Ahi, well, Hua is Eve, so not all divine names that we're coming across here. 34 is Al-Ab, well, Ab-Al, a father belonging to God, could be a way to say it. That, no, how does how is Abel spelled? Um, 136 is Yahpial and Chesal. Chesal is it Chesal? Is it or Hesal? Um, I think that's a chap. Yeah, either way, that doesn't work, because 1 and 8 would be make it end in 9. 1 and 5 would make it end... Okay, 1 and 5 makes it end in 6, so it's Hussol. Um sixty sixty one twenty. But no, that doesn't work either, because 126 plus 30 is... Yeah, that, that doesn't work. Um, be 186. Or maybe that, maybe the print's not full, so maybe that is 186. Names answering to the number of Mars and 5, hey, the letter of the holy name, 25. Yahi, 65, Adni, but Aduni would be more common if you take it back a ways. I think they reduced that, the spelling of that number to make it a tetragrammaton, but um, 326, is it? Grapial? Um, two plus three, twenty-five, three hundred twenty-five. 
um, for example, but but that doesn't look right either because Aleph, Aleph, and Bet would be a, only a four. Um, yeah. Names answering to the numbers of the sun. Wow, the letter of the holy name, and Ha are both six. 36 is al which is, you know, power. And 111 is Nacha'il, but it's Nakyal. Okay, Nakyal. Fifty, sixty, and then another fifty. Okay, yeah, that's the right numbering. And six hundred sixty-six, as seen in some of my memes, is Saurat. But see, I the the lettering is is difficult to discern here. Names answering to the numbers of Venus: seven, Aha, forty-nine, Hagyal, Katmal is the spirit of Venus, 170. Five. And Bani Sherpim, 1,225. The intelligence of Venus. Uh, Seraphim, what is, what's that word mean? I forget. Yes, I know the context, but all these things have meaning, right? Names answering to the numbers of Mercury as Bana as Boga, the name extended. Oh, well, there's there's no way that that's eight, because even Hay and Hay uh, and Aleph would be six, and there's th three more letters, so that's not it. Um, 64, Dean, you know, like judgment. Dini, 260. Hear y'all, the intelligence of Mercury. And 2080, Tap, Turret, Names answering to the numbers of the moon. We have 9, Hud, 81, Elim, 369, Chesmudi, uh, Chesmude, the spirit of the moon. I think it's, yeah, I think it's Chesmude. Um, 3,321, we have Shud, Bursh, Hum, Ach, Shirt, Tu, and we also have Ko, Kab, Tud, Shi, Si, Mar, Bur, Uch, Chah, Kim, uh, the intelligence uh, of the intelligences of the moon. So Malka, Bethar, Sisim, Head, Bura, Shehalim, and the other Shed, Barshimoth, Shart, Tathan. Okay. Every natural virtue. Works things far more wonderful when it is not only compounded of natural proportion, but also is informed by a choice observation of celestial opportune to this, viz.
when helped by many celestials, by subjecting inferiors to the celestials, as proper females to be made fruitful by their males. Also in every work there are to be observed the situation, motion, and aspect of the stars and planets in signs and degrees, and how all these stand in reference to the length and latitude of the climate. For by this are varied the qualities of the angels, which the rays of the celestial bodies upon the figure of the things described according to which celestial virtues are infused. So when you are working anything which belongs to any planet, you must place in it its dignities, fortunate and powerful, and ruling in the day, power, and in the figure of the heavens. Neither must you expect this signification of the work to be powerful, but you must observe the moon opportunely directed to this. For you shall do nothing without the assistance of the moon. And if you have more patterns of your work, observe them all, being most powerful, and looking upon one another with a friendly aspect. And if you cannot have such aspects, it will be convenient at least that you take them angular. But you shall take the moon, either when she looks both upon both, or is joined to one, and looks upon the other, or when she passes from the conjunction or aspect of one, the other, or when she passes from the conjunction or aspect of one. Okay. Oh, to the conjunction or aspect of another. For that I conceive must in on wise be emitted. Um, also, you shall in every work observe Mercury. For he is a messenger between the higher entities and the infernal entities. When he goes to the good, he increases their goodness. When to the bad, he hath influence on their wickedness. We call it an unfortunate sign or planet. When it is by the aspect of Saturn or Mars, especially opposite or quadrant. For these are the aspects of enmity. But a conjunction, a treen, and a sextile aspect are a friendship between these there is a greater conjunction but if you do not already behold it through a train and the planets be received it is accounted as already conjoined now all planets are afraid of the conjunction of the sun rejoicing in the train and sextile aspect thereof now we shall have the planets powerful when they are ruling in a house are in exultation, our triplicity, our term, our face, without combustion of what is direct in the figure of the heavens, viz., when they are in angles, especially of the rising, our tent, our houses presently succeeding, are in their delights. But we must take heed that they are not in the bounds are under the dominion of Saturn or Mars, lest they be in dark degrees and pits or acuities. You shall observe that the angles of the ascent and the tenth and the seventh be fortunate, as also the lord of the ascendant and the place of the sun and moon, and the place of the part of the fortune, and the lord thereof, the lord of the foregoing conjunction and prevention, but that they of the malignant planet fall unfortunate, unless happily they be significators of thy work are, can be, of any advantage to thee, or in thy revolution or birth, they had the predominance. For then, they are not at all to be depressed. Now shall we have the moon powerful, if she be in her house, or exaltation or triplicity, or face in degree convenient for the desired work. And if it had a mansion of these twenty-eight suitable to itself, and the work, let her not in the way be burnt up, nor in slow course, let her not be in the eclipse or burnt by the sun, unless she be in unity with the sun. Let her not descend in the southern latitude when she goeth out of the burning, neither let her be opposite to the sun, nor deprived of light. Let her not be hindered by Mars or Saturn. Via Busta. Now, We can say reincarnation and this sort of idea 
existed amongst what you'd call the Hindus um, via the Yazidi, actually. Um, and of course, the Eastern system is actually tends to be more advanced than the Western system. Um, it tends to update itself more to astronomical accuracy in terms of the, the zodiac ages and new planets being discovered and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it kind of seems to descend from that, uh, what we call the Yazidi culture of 30,000 years to present. Um, you know, the seven-based thing and all that. There is the light consideration to be had in all things concerning the fixed stars. Know this, that all the fixed stars are of the signification and nature of the seven planets, but some are of the nature of one planet and some of two. Hence, as often as any planet is joined with any of the fixed stars of its own nature, the signification of that star is made more powerful and the nature of the planet augmented. But if it be a star of two natures, the nature of that which shall be the stronger with it shall overcome its signification. As, for example, if it be of the nature of Mars and Venus, if Mars shall be stronger with it, the nature of Mars shall overcome. But if Venus, the nature of Venus shall overcome. Now, the natures of fixed stars are discovered by their colors, as they agree with certain planets and are ascribed to them. Now, the colors of the planets are these, of Saturn, blue, and leaden, and shining with this, of Jupiter, citrine, near to a paleness, and clear with this, of Mars, red and fiery, of the sun, yellow, when it rises red, afterwards glittering, of Venus, white and shining, white in the morning, and reddish in the evening, and of Mercury, glittering, of the moon, fair. Know also that of the fixed stars, by how much the greater and brighter and apparent they are, so much the greater and stronger is the signification. Such are those stars called by the astrologers of the first and second magnitude. I will tell thee some of these which are more potent to this faculty, viz. the navel of Andromeda in the 22nd degree of Aries, of the nature of Venus and Mercury, some call it Jovial and Saturnine, the head of Algol in the 18th degree of Taurus, of the nature of Saturn and Jupiter, the Pleiades are also in the 22nd degree, a lunary star by nature and complexion martial. Also, Aldebaran in the 3rd degree of Gemini is of the nature of Mars and complexion of Venus, but Adepts places this in the 25th degree of Aries, the Goat Star in the 13th degree of Gemini is the nature of Jupiter and Saturn. The Great Dog Star is in the 7th degree of Cancer and Venereal. Not, not that other thing, not that thing, but, you know, the Little star, Dog Star is in the 17th degree of the same and is of the nature of Mercury and complexion of Mars, the King Star which is called the Heart of the Lion, and is in the 21st degree of Leo, and the nature of Jupiter and Mars. The tail of the Great Bear is in the 9th degree of Virgo, and is venereal and lunar. The... Well, I, I guess, you know. But the star, which is called Bright Wing, of the crow is in the seventh degree of Libra, and in the thirteenth degree of the same is the left wing of the same and both the nature of Saturn and Mars. The star called Spica is in the sixteenth degree of the same and is venereal and mercurial. In the seventh, in the seventeenth degree of the same is Alchemeth of the nature of Mars and Jupiter, but of this, when the sun's aspect is full towards it, of that, when on the contrary, Alethia, in the fourth degree of Scorpio, of the nature of Venus and Mars, the heart of the Scorpion is in the third degree of Sagittarius, of the nature of Mars and Jupiter, 
know, the sphere of the stars kind of um, rotates about a degree every 17 years. Over the course of the year, uh, well, I mean, 36 thumbs, like at an arm's length, it, you know, forms a circle around you, so there's a reason for the number 36, too. The falling vulture is in the seventh degree of Capricorn, Temperance, Mercurial, and Venereal. The tail of Capricorn is in the 16th degree of Aquarius, of the nature of Saturn and Mercury. The star, called the shoulder of the horse, is in the third degree of Pisces, of the nature of Jupiter and Mars. And it shall be a general rule for you to expect the proper gifts of the stars, whilst they rule be prevented of them, they being unfortunate, as is above shewed, for celestial bodies inasmuch as they are affected, fortunately or unfortunately, so much do they affect us, our works, and those things which we use, fortunately or unhappily. And although many effects proceed from the fixed stars, yet they are attributed to the planets, as because being more near to us and more distant and known, so because they execute whatever the superior stars communicate to them of the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon have obtained the administration of ruling the heavens and all bodies under the heavens. The sun is the lord of all elementary virtues, and the moon by virtue of the sun is mistress of generation, increase or decrease. By the sun and moon, life is infused into all things, which Orpheus calls the enlivening eyes of heaven. The sun giveth light to all things of itself, and gives it plentifully, not only to all things in heaven and air, but earth and deep. Whatever good we have, Jamblicus says, we have it from the sun alone, or from it through other things. Hindus calls the sun the fountain of celestial light, and many of the philosophers place the soul of the world chiefly in the sun, as that which, filling the whole globe of the sun, doth send forth its rays on all sides, as it were a spirit through all things distributing life, sense, and motion to the universe. Hence the Antient naturalists call the sun the very heart of heaven, and the Chaldeans put it as the middle of the planets. The Egyptians also placed it in the middle of the world, viz. between the two fives of the world, i.e. above the sun, they place five planets, and under him the moon and four elements. For it is, amongst other stars, the image and statue of of the great prince of both worlds, these terrestrial and celestial, the true light and the most exact image of God himself, whose essence resembles the Father, light, the Son, heat, the Holy Ghost, so that by the Platonists have nothing to hold forth divine essence more manifestly by than this. The Son disposes even the very spirit and mind of man, which Homer says and is approved by Aristotle that there are in the mind such like motions as the sun, the prince and moderator of the planets, brings to us every day, but the moon, the nearest to the earth, the receptacle of all the heavenly influences, by the swiftness of her course, is joined to the sun, and the other planets and stars every month, and receiving the beams and influences of all the other planets and stars, as a conception, bringing them forth, to the inferior world as being next to itself. For all the stars have influence on it, being the last receiver which afterwards communicates the influence of all the superiors to these inferiors and pours them forth on the earth. And it more manifestly disposes these inferiors than others. Therefore, her motion is to be observed before the others as the parent of all conceptions which it diversely issues forth in these inferiors 
according to the diverse complexion, motion, situation, and different aspects to the planets and other stars. And though it receives powers from all the stars, yet especially from the sun, as oft as it is in the conjunction with the same, it is replenished with the divine virtue, and according to the aspect thereof it borrows its complexion. From it the heavenly bodies begin that series of things which the Hindus calls the golden chain, by which everything in cause, being linked one to another, do depend on the superiority even until it may be brought unto the supreme cause of all, from which all things depend, hence it is, that without the moon intermediating, we cannot at any time attract the power of the superiors. Therefore, to obtain the virtue of any star, take the stone and herb of that planet, which the moon fortunately comes under, or has a good aspect on that star. And seeing the moon measures the whole space, the zodiac, in the time of twenty-eight days, hence it is, that wise men of the Indians and most of the ancient astrologers have granted twenty-eight mansions to the moon, which being fixed in the eighth spear, do enjoy diverse names and properties from the various signs and stars which are contained in them, through which, while the moon wanders, it obtains many other powers and virtues. But every one of these mansions, according to the opinion of Atomek or Alchimek, that is, the spike of Virgo, or flying spike, Abraham contained 12 degrees and 51 minutes, and almost 26 seconds, whose names and also their beginnings in the zodiac. Of the eighth sphere are these. The first is called Alnath, that is, the horns of Aries. His beginning is from the head of Aries of the eighth sphere. It causes discords and journeys. The second is called Elothaim, or Abukan, that is, the belly of Aries. And his beginning is from the twelfth degree of the same sign. Fifty-one minutes, fifty-two seconds, complete. It conduces the finding of treasures and to the retaining of captives. The third is called Alka Amazon, or Atharei, that is showing our Plytus. His beginning is from the 25th degree of Aries complete, 42 minutes and 51 seconds. It is profitable to sailors, huntsmen, and alchemists. The fourth mansion is called Aldebaram, or Adalemon, that is the eye, or head of Taurus. His beginning is from the 8th degree of Taurus, 34 minutes and 17 seconds of the same. Taurus being excluded, it causes the destruction and hindrance of buildings, fountains, wells, gold mines, and flights of creeping things, and begets discord. Now let's remember that the constellations, um, there's a lot of variance in a lot of constellations which stars are included. And obviously the zodiac. No, Ophiuchus is one of the decans, so it's one of the 36. So it's, you know, you know, it's, it's not a 13th constellation. So that, that's not a theory that knows much about astronomy or astrology. Um, but, you know, um, well, Ophiuchus was called different things and different whatever, but it, it wasn't, you know, from that angle, we can, we're not looking about a 13, whatever, but um, they're not even, you know. Some constellations are like, you could say, uh, uh, was it, isn't Draco pretty much a, close to a third of the year, kind of, you know? Some are like a quarter, some are like, well, I mean, Draco is not one of the, uh, you know, zodiac constellations, but you know what I mean. They've um, Aquarius is pretty big. Aries, I think, is the smallest one. Um, not even half of a month, really. But um, although you could say more of it, but you know, um, the fifth is called Alcate or Abokay, 
The beginning of it is after the 21st degree of Taurus. 25 minutes, 40 seconds. It helps to the return from a journey, to the instruction of scholars. It confirms edifices. It gives health and goodwill. The sixth is called Althana, or Alkea. That is the little star of great light. His beginning is after the fourth degree of Gemini, 17 minutes and 9 seconds. It conduces to hunting and besieging towns and revenge of princes. It destroys harvest and fruit and hinders the operation of the physician. The seventh is called Adamiak, or uh, Alarzak, that is the arm of Gemini, and begins from the 17th degree of Gemini, 18 minutes and 34 seconds, and lasts even to the end of the sign, and confirms gang and friendship. It is profitable to lovers and destroys magistracies, and is one quarter of the heaven completed in these 17 mansions, and the like order and number of degrees, minutes, and seconds. The remaining mansions in every quarter have their several beginnings, namely, so that in the first sign of this quarter, three mansions take their beginnings, in the other two signs, two mansions in each, and therefore the seven following mansions begin with Cancer, whose names are Alzana, Anna Trachia, that is mixed, cloudy, these the eighth mansion. It causes love, friendship, and society of fellow travelers. It drives away mice, and afflicts captives, confirming their imprisonment. And, well, there's there's a lot. We can still go over in this chapter. And so what, there's going to be another two programs, right? Um, let's remember, it's, uh, you know, there, there are certain minute... Um, effects of gravity and visual effects, but it's more of the associations that people have with these things. Um, if you don't believe in this system of astrology or you don't know about this thing being said by astrologers, then it tends not to affect you. If you think you're the wrong uh, sun sign, you tend and, and you believe that stuff, you tend to interpret yourself as being under that sun sign. Remember my red shirt. Um, now, I, I didn't have those beliefs, but I, I, I made a meaningful poem. But that poem's not my real birth chart. That's my faux birth chart based on, you know, a false chart, uh, you know, a previous age, right? So things would be shifted over. I don't know how many degrees. Um, I tend to use a program that tells me the positions of the planets and stuff. That's about 33 degrees off. So, 33 point something maybe, I think. But I'm not sure if even if I, uh, I know where this website is again. Um, but such and such planet and such and such star and such and such position tend not to have actual effects that are attributed to them. But as it's saying, it's talismanic. It's stuff that completes a ritual.